if your mind is now awakened to the fact that it is controlling your life, then it is awakening you to the fact that you must control your thinking and raise it to the highest level you can because so much of the quality of your life is dependent directly on the quality of your thinking. So, if this is a live insight in your mind, then you will comfortably move to the second insight that I think is crucial. And that is that your thinking is problematic. Your thinking and my thinking is often problematic. We make mistakes every day in our thinking. We jump to conclusions. We accept false assumptions. We accept media presentations, media conceptualizations of the world when the media is often culturally, nationally, and in other ways biased. We are problematic thinkers. The question is, do are we alive to that problematic nature? Do we see the narrowness in our own point of view? Are we breaking down barriers between our point of view and the point of view of people that we think are wrong while we are right? <laughs> I want to leave you with one example on this insight into the problematics of thinking. Notice that national leaders very rarely admit that our nation, whatever nation we come from, is always right when it has conflicts with other nations. I remember uh, during the presidency of the first George Bush, on the occasion of American troops having killed civilians in an irresponsible way, he said on the media, I shall never apologize for the United States. Think of that as a comment on thinking. I will never admit that we're wrong. I don't care what the facts are. I will always defend the United States. That is the opposite view from the view which I'm encouraging. And I hope that you yourself encourage. Let us now move to the third insight, which I formulate in the following way. Discover the personal narrative in which you live your life. The personal narrative. What's that? It's your story. The story of you as a thinker. And you are creating that story every day. You thought as a child. You thought as an adolescent. You thought as a young adult. And some of you are still very much young adults. And you, if you're like me, you thought for many years about your thinking. And hopefully make increasing discoveries into the problematics of your thinking. But to what extent are you consciously aware of the story of yourself, which your life instantiates and which your words describe? Side number four, discover your capacity to consciously intervene in your thinking. That is, not simply to notice your thinking, but to swoop down upon it and do something about your thinking. <laughs> the next insight is more of a stretch and requires a bit of perhaps professional history. And that is, have you learned how to deconstruct thinking? How to break thinking down into its constituent parts? There is always a whole and there are parts. And you can best understand the whole by examining the parts. You best understand the parts by placing them within the whole. You best understand the whole and the parts by moving up and back between them. But in order to move up and back between the whole and the parts, 
you must be able to, one, identify the parts and distinguish them from other parts and understand the relationship of part one to part two. Well, let me give you eight ways to intervene and break down thinking into its parts. And you'll be doing this, hopefully, in many, if not most, of your sessions. Whenever I think, whenever you think, we think for a purpose. If we want to understand our thinking, understand the purpose that drives it. What are we trying to accomplish? For example, if you ever lose your temper while you're expressing views with another person, what is your purpose in losing your temper? Is that an, an effective way to interact with another human being? What, what is our purpose as a nation? What are we trying to accomplish? To what extent, as a nation, is our purpose revealing that we act from high values, or does it reveal that we act in ways to advance our vested interests, often at the expense of our values? Purpose, discovery of purpose, modification of purpose, broadening of purpose, that is one way to break down your thinking, to own your purposes. You might notice also that some of your purposes, some of my purposes, are subconscious, in which I pursue goals and objectives that I'm not aware I'm pursuing until I discover that part of my goal and purpose is something I cannot explicitly own to. A second part of thinking is questions. What questions am I raising in my life with my children, with myself? What are my questions? What are the issues that I need to think about? What are the problems that I need to face? So here is my purpose. Here are the questions I'm raising. Here is my purpose. Here's the problems I'm facing. Here is my purpose. Here are the issues that are generated by that thinking. So, purpose, question, now information. What information am I using in my thinking to come to conclusions about myself, about the world, about my students? What information am I using? Where did I get that information? How good is that information? And so the ability to identify the purpose of thinking, the issues it raises, and the information relevant to those questions. And the intervention here is to question the various sources of information to see what you can learn and what you need to be wary of. 